Hey guys, Brian here from Better Chest Training. And in today's video, I'm going to be highlighting some of the basic features of LeeChess.org. Uh, and this video is going to be aimed at beginners who have just started playing chess so that they can use this great website to play and learn about chess. Check it out. Okay, uh, this video will be aimed at uh, people just learning chess, uh, like people in some of my beginner classes. And uh, I'm mainly going to be showing you two things, uh, how to uh, play a game uh, so you can practice, as well as some of the items from the Learn menu. And there's a lot of other features, and if there's anything you're interested in me uh, giving a tutorial for, you can check that out. But uh, let's start off with uh, how to uh, play a game. And there are a few features here. A few ways to do this. And the first one is the quick pairing. And you can see all of these different um, types. And these are all different time controls. And so, for example, 15 plus 10 is uh, 15 minutes for each side plus 10 seconds. Uh, or you can have a 5 plus 0, which just means 5 minutes for each side. And when you're out of time, uh, you lose the game. Uh, you can also set up your own with custom. And here you can uh, slide the initial time as well as... Uh, the increment, how much, how many seconds are going to get added. And there you can also indicate it whether you want it to be rated or casual, as well as your rating range. Uh, if you're just starting out, I would encourage you to uh, just do something like a negative 100 people rated 100 below and a couple hundred above. Okay, and then um, you could pick either the black side or the white side or, um, or random. Okay. Uh, or if you pick one of the quick pairings, they try to put you, uh, at least my experience, they try to put you within 100 or 200 rating points uh, within your current rating. So this is a great way to get a quick game. And again, uh, if you're just starting out, I would start out with one of these kind of medium time controls, 10 plus 5 or 15 plus 10. So that way you can play a game and then you can analyze it. Okay, uh, you could also go to the lobby and you can... Um, find a game that might look interesting. For example, this person's rated around the same as myself, these two people, and if I wanted to play them, I would click on this and challenge them. And then if you press on this gear here, you can actually um, select and filter the types of challenges. So I like playing standard chess, and I'm really not too interested in Blitz or Bullet, and so uh, I will look for that. And I'll look for people rated at least 1,800 up to say 2300 and so if i filter this you'll see that it reduces the amount of challenges that i can see okay and then uh, as i showed you before you can you can also set up your own game uh, by going here to quick quick uh, pairing and doing custom and that will put your challenge in the lobby okay we just talked about uh, getting a single game, but what you can also do, if you're interested, you can um, play in a tournament. And the main tournaments that we have here, if we go down here, we can go to Open Tournaments, and this will bring up our uh, tournament schedule. And uh, you can either create a tournament of your own, or you can play in one of the tournaments. And you can see here there are several going on. For example, there's a bullet tournament that lasts about, um, looks like about half an hour. And there's this one that's been going on for a while. This is a Super Blitz Arena. So this one's going to last for a while. So if you have a lot of time, but many times you may only have like half an hour to an hour. So you can try like the Daily Rapid Arena. For example, this one started uh, just a few minutes ago and will go for, this one goes for three hours or actually two and a half hours. So you can really, uh, if you have, if you want to play a few games, most of these are uh, non-increments. Um, you can play that, and if you go scroll down a little bit, we have some of more of the specialty tournaments as well as some of the uh, these tournaments here. For example, this one is rated for less than thirteen hundred. This for less than fifteen hundred. So if you're a beginner, you can participate in these, but uh, uh, you can check those out as well. Okay, after you play your games, you can um, analyze your games to see where you made a mistake. And I'm going to show you just from one of my recent games here. I played a game this morning. 
and here uh, this is what it would look like after right after I played and I would go here to the analysis board and I would click on that and I already did some analysis as you can see here but what you can do is you can go to the beginning and then you can go through and look at the different moves and let's say uh, let's go forward a little bit um, let's say I wanted to try a different move here I can make a different move and then uh, there's a few ways I can look at this. I can analyze it by myself, by moving the pieces for the other side. Or I can actually turn on the computer engine, as you can see here in the upper right. And it will tell me uh, here 0 0.5 or 0 0.4 means that uh, white has a very slight advantage. Um, and it will tell me the best moves. Now, if you're just starting out in chess, I would be careful about using this feature too much because I think one of the best ways to improve in chess is to try to explore by yourself and, and move the pieces around and see what you could have done better, okay? But as you move along, you might want to see what the computer says and the computer might have some interesting moves for you to try. The other way to do this, and this is something that I recommend to try, is to, uh, you can do continue from here. So for example, I'll just click this just to show you, but we're not going to play. Uh, you could say play with the computer and it's going to take that position that you were on and you can uh, set the time that you want as well as the level of the computer. For example, uh, level eight is the strongest and level one or level two would be the weakest. And sometimes I, well, for me, I usually go on six, seven or eight to give myself a good game, but obviously you can uh, try it from a different level. I always recommend uh, trying it from a level just slightly stronger than where you are at. But if you do that, and again, I could just start, you would click on which side you want. For example, if I'm playing white here, I would uh, click the white side to try it out and see what uh, the computer um, would do against my moves there. And it's just a way to learn from your games. Uh, let's go back to let's go back to that one more time. So here you can see your list of games. I'm going to click on this one, and going to the analysis board, you can uh, do those various things. Like I said, you can continue from here. And what you could actually do, if you wanted to share this with one of your friends, although maybe I'll do a separate video about this, you can actually do what's called a study. And so I'm going to go ahead and click on that. And I'm going to create a study for this game. And this sets it up in a separate uh, um, sort of entry. And you can actually invite your friends and say add members. And you can type your friends in if you know their username and invite them to uh, analyze the game with you. And therefore, and then they can move the pieces around or you could set it so they can move the pieces around. Or if they took a look, take a look at it while... Uh, you know, on their own, they can, they leave comments. For example, they might want to leave a comment uh, for the game here. They can click here and they can say, uh, this was a good move, for example. Okay, so just to review that real quick, after you play your game, this is from the profile page. You can see your most recent games here by clicking on this tab. You click on the game and you can go to the analysis board if you want to analyze it by yourself. But if you want to study it, you can click on this menu bar here and click on study. Or if you want to try playing it out against a computer engine, you can click continue from here. And that would be two great ways to go over your games and try to learn from them. Okay, to finish up this video, I just want to show you some of the educational resources here on Lee Chess. If you go to this menu here, learn, uh, the learn menu, you could do a few things. You could do chess basics. I'm going to go to that in a moment, but let me just go through these. You can practice coordinates, which is a cool little uh, mini game that can help you to visualize the board better. A study, which I just showed you, uh, which will, and there's a lot of people who have public studies that you can learn from. And then you can also look up, look for coaches in case you want to take your chess further and get instruction. But let's go ahead and look at here at this chess basics. And it starts out by uh, going through each of the pieces. So if you're just starting out in chess, you can review how the pieces move. You can also review some of the fundamentals, including capturing, protecting, and uh, capturing and defending pieces. And then 
uh, as well as some of the other basics, such as getting out of check and checkmates in one. And then you can move further on with intermediate and advanced instruction. But again, these are all aimed at beginner level, okay? You can also go to practice, and this will have a set of different checkmate patterns, as well as some basic tactics and intermediate tactics in order for you to learn. And actually also some pawn end games and rook end games, which are among the most fundamental. So uh, these are all for free on Lee Chess under the Learn tab. Coordinates, like I said, it's a little mini game. And what you would do, and I'll just show you a few seconds, you can start it. And what you have to do here is click on the button. Um, and that one's from black, E2, G8, F2, D5. And this kind of gets you used to finding the squares. And this is very important when you are uh, learning to read chess and when you're communicating about chess. So it's very important to understand the squares. And I actually think this will help with your visualization as you are trying to think about chess during your games. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and stop there. But uh, uh, you can do that with both sides. You can do it with white side. But uh, that's something that I, I just do occasionally. It's kind of fun as well. Okay, uh, finally, there are puzzles. And there's different types. Puzzle Storm is sort of uh, testing your quick reflexes. And puzzles themselves uh, gives you more time to practice your calculation. So you can try those as well. And I would encourage you to experiment and do a little bit of each to see what you enjoy and uh, combine that with playing and studying your games. And you've got a good start. I think Lee Chess is a great resource. It's totally free and it's a great place to play chess and learn about chess. Thank you.